Today I want to take a look at getting started with the Synfig animation program. So this is a vector based animation program in 2D that allows you to transition between different states and animate objects. We're going to go and take a look at installing the program and then we're going to also take a look at the basic starting set of tools that you can use and show some different actions to get you started using keyframes and making your objects move using this program. Let's hop right in and take a look at how to get started. So I'm over here on my desktop and I'm using an Ubuntu computer version 1804. So on my computer, I can hit my home screen and that pops up this launcher here. You can also click this icon in your launcher. And if you start typing software, so software, you should have the software center here. And once you have that application open, you can click the search icon in the upper right and search for Synfig. So here it is, Synfig Studio. I'll click on that and then I'll press install. Now that this is installed, I get a button that says launch. I'll click that to start the program. And then the Synfig Studio application starts up. I'm going to maximize my screen. And then I'm just going to grab the Synfig Studio icon in my launcher. I'm going to drag it up. This automatically locks it to my launcher. You could alternatively right click and then lock it to your launcher this way. Now these are the default panes that Synfig comes started with. A couple of these, I like to just rearrange these and you can rearrange all the panes very easily within Synfig. So for instance, if you wanted to remove items from your program, you can right click on them and you can close them. So I don't really need the, the color swatches. I'm just gonna close out of all these on the right hand side and now that pane jumps away. If you ever want to get those panes back, you can come up to your window and you can actually add some of these panes back to your program. Now, you can rearrange things by grabbing an icon and pulling them to different sections. So, for instance, if I wanted this to appear within this section here, I can choose if I want it to appear to the left above, to the right below, or I can add it right to this pane. I'm going to add this toolbox right below the tools here. So, that arrow is now over here, and if I just rearrange the size here, as I click on the different tools, the options for those tools now appear below the tools that I'm clicking on. So I think that looks kind of nice. Now, I like that I have the layers over here on the right hand side and the layer sets, I think that's great. I actually want to move this parameters box over into this box with them. So I'm just gonna drag the icon over like that. And then I might even move my keyframe. So this is one of the main dialogues that you're gonna be using throughout your projects is, is this keyframes dialogue. So I'm just gonna grab that I'm gonna move that up to the right as well. Okay, that's great. I might just move it over here all the way to the left. Okay, now I have this timeline here, which is very important for my purposes, but I don't really need the graphs right now. So I'm gonna close this. I don't need this library, and I actually don't need this canvas metadata at the moment. So I'm gonna close out of all those. And then I actually, since this timeline corresponds to some of these commands here. I actually would rather that this timeline only spans across this middle section of the screen. So I can grab this icon and I can come up and I can just put it below the main screen like that. And we can shrink this down a little bit here. So I think that's an okay setup for now. I'm actually going to close out of this history tab as well. And that kind of simplifies my layout a fair amount. And if I were to close out of the program now and reopen it, those defaults should stay constant. So let's just close out and let's go back over here into our launcher and let's click Synfig Studio and we'll start the program up again. Okay, great. So we have our panels the way that we had expected them. That looks fine. And we can go ahead and get started doing some of the animations here. So the first thing we might wanna do is we might wanna understand the concept of keyframes. So this keyframe here starts at the beginning and has no length in time. So this is the very first keyframe in our timeline. Let's take a look here. And if we were to draw, let's say a square, we have this at the very first period in time. Now, if we wanted to move this square across the screen over to the other side, what we'd have to do is we'd have to add another keyframe. Now, we can't add a keyframe at the moment because 
our timeline, we are at the very beginning of the time and we already have a keyframe there. So you see that this little plus sign is squared out so we can't add anything. Now if we were to move along the timeline, let's say to 24 frames, this is now available to us and we can add this plus and you'll see here that we have from the beginning of the time for a length of 24 frames and then starting at the 24th frame all the way to back to the zero frame, we have this next section here. So for instance, this, if we want to click on this, this is the actual keyframe that we're on and I'm moving these accidentally, but so this is the second keyframe and you notice that the keyframes toggle as I click them down here in the timeline. Um, and you can also jump to them by clicking this JMP text here. So I'm going to go to the second keyframe here and then I'm going to click this little green man here to animate this transition. I'm going to press animate and I'm going to come over, grab my move tool or my smooth move tool and I'm going to grab this little green node which represents where I'm moving this object and I'm going to move this rectangle or the square over to the right hand side for this other keyframe. Now we could watch this animation take place if we go back to our timeline and I'm going to jump to the beginning of the timeline and then I'm just going to press play and you can see this transition happen. So it takes 24 frames to do it and then it moves all the way to the right hand side of the screen. Now one thing to note here is when I drew this rectangle I was actually using this mode here, this create a region layer. If you were to create a rectangle layer here it becomes a little harder to move objects around later. I've had trouble in the past moving these rectangle objects because it actually just wants to move some of the uh, the nodes here to actually change the shape of the object. I'm actually going to come over to my layers. I don't need this. This was just for a demonstration. I'm going to go to my layers panel here and you can see that this rectangle here is the, the one that's selected and I'm just going to move this to the trash. I don't need that one right now. Let's just focus on the single layer for now. And so we have this keyframe that moves and if we jump between keyframes here and if we jump on our timeline uh, we can notice that these things jump together. That's great. And we could do another transition here. So we, we start with a color here, but we could actually go to this other keyframe and we could change the color here as well. So make sure animate is still selected here. And if you were to change your color, you could change this. I'm going to go to my fill tool. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to change it to a red color. And now if I jump back, you see it's blue and red. And then if I press the animate again to just play it, you can see that color transitions there. And I can turn off my animation. Uh, recorder right there and now we can see that smooth animation take place. Now another kind of interesting thing here is you'll notice that this timeline here has all these different little nodes that represent the type of animation so one of these is our motion and one of these is our color. So if we were to delete one of these we could get rid of one of those uh, transitions. So I'm going to remove that and let's just come back here and let's play this now. So we lost our motion. So now you see that the, the square changes colors, but it no longer moves across the screen. So that's how you can delete those individual uh, different animations. And so that's one thing that you won't get in this quick, t this, uh, quick view of the timeline. So there actually is a timeline here. So uh, for instance, you could get rid of this larger timeline screen, which is actually really helpful, but you have a quick timeline here that you can move around and you can jump between keyframes by clicking these little triangles and you can move along the timeline so you can play the animation at whatever speed you want by just clicking and dragging but you won't get those individual little animation uh, icons which is really helpful when you're manipulating this uh, object across time. Okay, that's it for this initial intro. I hope it's really helpful to you and if you're interested in these videos, I'd love to make more of this content in the future. Thanks for watching.